Are you there? I'm back. <laughs> okay. Okay. Best laid plans. You know, and then hilarious. The top of the hour, right at six o'clock, my computer just froze. It's never happened before, but it was bound to at some point. Okay. So yes, I am back, and I'm I'm running the slideshow, guys. <laughs> so <laughs> we can go ahead and get started at this point. Welcome everyone again. Uh, if you've just got here, we would love to uh, know who's here and where you're from, so you can uh, type your name and location down in the chat box below. So let me open this up and get moving here. I think everyone can see that. I'm going to have to back out a little bit. Okay. Everyone should be able to see and read that pretty well. Welcome to tonight's webinar. You've already uh, been talking with Dr. Fain. I am Heath Redding. And we are going to get moving. Uh, do you want to go over tonight's schedule? Yeah, that, I think that's there? a good idea. Absolutely, yeah. it's a good idea here. And uh, uh, we will be covering uh, several strong points, and I'll, I will fill in uh, the distances between those points as we go. Um, so, um, Heath, I think we ought to just start on some of the, the dirty secrets of the vitamin and supplement industry. What do you think? Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. Okay, so I'm going to move forward here. Take it away, Dr. Fain. Well, uh, it's confusing. It's absolutely confusing to um, go to a vitamin store or a supplement shop and, and uh, uh, hope that you're going to get adequate uh, direction to what you're trying to do and what you're trying to deal with and uh, only finding out that, gee, the person behind the counter really doesn't know much except for maybe where the product is in the store that you might have read about or checked out online. And the online situation is even a as complicated And that you, if you don't know your supplier, how do you know your supplies? And you don't want to surprise supply. I mean, it's, it's pretty confusing. So here's, uh, here are three points uh, to how the products are marketed. Uh, first, uh, there's a, a group in, this, uh, organ in the uh, supplement field called jobbers. Uh, the second is, is that often formula products don't have enough of the active ingredients in for what you want to do nutritionally. They have the intention, though, of upselling you another product to fill in for those gaps. So you end up buying more than what you really needed. And you've got a lot more uh, nutritional supplements in the formula than you could ever really need or want. The uh, third thing is, is the, the, this is a very um, hard one to figure out, and it's that labeling a supplement as a name versus a supplement description. Now, let me sort that out a little bit, then I'll go backwards. Um, I saw a supplement labeled as vitamin B50. Now, in most terminology, that would be 50 milligrams of the entire B vitamin except for folic acid, which is appropriate. You don't want that much in it. And you would look on the back, and your bottle of every uh, tablet or capsule in there, typically it's a tablet for a, a B complex, would have 50 milligrams of all of the main ingredients. Well, it looked on the back, and it had 20 micrograms, which is a fraction of 50 milligrams, a tiny fraction. Uh, and it had, oh, um, you know, 30 milligrams of B2. And uh, it, it's just... It was entirely different what the front of the bottle said. How did they do that? Well, the front of the bottle was actually a B50. It was a B-complex 50. If you looked at it, it was a complex of the B vitamins, and there were 50 tablets in the bottle. And that's a whole different creature than getting a B-complex 50 milligrams of the active ingredients. So be very, very careful of the name in the front and what it says in the back. It's a, it's a sneaky kind of uh, selling technique. Uh, the jobbers, uh, this is a, an interesting thing. There are different tiers of uh, products on the uh, market, on the retail market, the wholesale market too. And uh, jobbers come in as uh, companies that by the very end of the expiration date of these big vats of product that get delivered to the U.S., 
and uh, come in through uh, customs and uh, USDA has inspected all of them and established an expiration date for that large amount that comes in, typically brought in by uh, Cargill or some of the big grocery um, companies like that, uh, but also the pharmaceutical companies bring it in. Uh, their number crunchers sort out how much is going to be sold by their under corporations that they move it to, and uh, then they have some left over that they're not going to use. They know it's not going to be used. So instead of tossing it, uh, the current situation is, is that they can sell it, the end of the run, uh, unencapsulated, un, un, uh, unused, still in the original barrel, if you will, uh, and uh, to companies that buy it for pennies on the dollar, and uh, they encapsulate it under their own brand name, and uh, they get a brand new expiration date that way. And uh, these are called jobbers in this industry, just what it sounds like. It's a job. They put it together and sell it. Now, does that make a difference? Well, the thing of it is, is that you don't actually know how old the supplement is that you're taking. Does this make a difference? Uh, it does with aromatics. It does with vitamins. may not make any difference at all with minerals. Minerals rarely go bad, think of, you know, calcium, I mean, how does calcium go bad? The expiration date is not too meaningful there. Uh, but vitamins that are active and herbals that are aromatic need to be fresh. Uh, the second one that I mentioned is the formula product that's meant to do an upsell. And uh, these uh, products are um, uh, it's a long list of supplements in the product, so it's a formula product. I'm not, uh, think of a multivitamin, that's a formula product. I'm okay with that. Multivitamins are meant to be nutritional uh, insurance, and that's exactly what they're for. You know, you know, if you're on the go and it's a fast, hairy world and you aren't eating properly or skipping too many meals and not getting enough green leafies, or who does? then a multivitamin comes into play. But I'm not talking about them. I'm talking about products that say something like for blood pressure support. And there's a list of, um, you know, 8, 10, 12 uh, herbals in there. Chances are not a single herbal is going to be uh, of the sufficient amount to be useful for what you're trying to do. And there's typically uh, another product from that same company that is meant to be an upsell to make up some of the difference. So you end up paying a lot more for um, a lot of uh, product supplement that you simply don't need. Um, did you uh, have any thoughts about that, Heath, yourself? I know that uh, from time to time you use supplements. Have you seen uh, any of those three? Uh, absolutely. You know, I, I go in stores, and like you said at the beginning, um, I initially usually just feel overwhelmed. There's so many options. There's so many different ones. So many, you know, false promises. You just, you know, you can really get confused really easily going into any vitamin store and trying to figure out what's good, what's bad. Um, that's interesting. I've never heard of the jobbers before. It's fascinating. Uh, it's a little known aspect to, uh, to what goes on. Uh, one way of telling that, and that kind of goes into our next subject uh, in a very nice segue, and uh, the, the one way of telling that is to look at the front of the bottle. And the front of the bottle uh, will give the manufacturer's name. For instance, Good and Natural. If you see in the back, these yellow bottles all the way in the back uh, here are all Good and Natural products. And it says Good and Natural on the front. If you look at the small lettering, the truth is always in the small lettering, isn't it? On the very back of the bottle, it'll say manufactured by Good and Natural. Uh, that is a, a first line product. Um, first line doesn't have to be expensive. It's just that this is the first use of the products that have been brought in and checked by the USDA for quality and purity. And uh, that's one certain way of being sure that you've got a, a first-tier product. Uh, private label products are an exception all across the board. Uh, private label products are typically bottled uh, upon order by the practitioner. And private label products 
mostly are practitioner driven. So the, the product impurity is, uh, is there, it's typically fresher, there are white papers on all nutritional supplements and uh, the uh, pharmacopas that make the private label typically have the white papers there and review them and disallow the product to go to a practitioner if the white paper isn't what the pharmacopas says it should be. Uh, I've had product that has been wonderful product that I'm not able to get simply because the pharmacopas that I ordered my private label from, uh, they were uncomfortable with uh, what they saw in the white papers. So they would not encapsulate it and put it in bottles. Different creature altogether. Private label will say on there, made for, and there'll be a name of a practitioner. So you want to see that on the bottle. Uh, you may not even see the name of the company. That's kept rather close to the chest. Uh, these are uh, particular products and quality products that um, uh, the, uh, are uh, protected against you know, copyright infringement and that sort of thing. Uh, the uh, other thing to look for is the jobber products and the way you sort that out again is to look at the front of the bottle to see what the brand name is. What does it say on the front? For instance, good and natural. The yellow bottles behind me. High quality, top tier, uh, lower cost, but high quality uh, commercial products. The, uh, the name of the manufacturer, Good and Natural, is right at the top. And if you look at the back, it says manufactured by Good and Natural. A jobber's product will have a different name on the top. And I'm not going to mm -hmm. list those out. I'm, I'm not sure that I, I want to deal with a, a lawyer listening in on that one, but the, uh, the name at the top of the label on the front and on the back will be a different company name or it'll say distributed by. If okay. it's distributed by, then it may not be a top tier product. It probably isn't. Okay. And uh, the, so that's something to watch out for. Right. So, so main tip here is to try to find the company name that's on the front on the back of the bottle too and you know you know it won't be a quote unquote jobber that uh, or it's you know an older product is that what you're saying essentially yes uh, with the exception of the private label that's entirely true for all of the commercial brands with private label it's a little different creature and yeah. um, a private label is an amazing product line actually right Okay, wonderful. Well, let's yeah, let's go ahead and move into part two, and um, I'm interested in hearing what you have to say about uh, how we can you know find the best vitamins and supplements. And uh, I'll move the slideshow along here. Yeah, very good. The um, people assume, uh, and incorrectly so, that if you go by price, the higher price product is going to be a better product uh, than a lower price product. Uh, that isn't true. Uh, is it true, is the opposite true, is the lower price product a lesser product than the higher price? Not necessarily so. So here's the confusion again. Uh, uh, I, I had a friend who uh, absolutely wanted a pedigreed automobile, you know, one of those big names, very expensive, uh, beautiful automobiles. And uh, after getting it, uh, he found that Gee, it broke down more often, it was in the shop more often, it was uh, gorgeous to look at, and more unreliable than anything he'd ever owned in his life. Hmm. And uh, price doesn't really reflect quality. The uh, way to go is to look at something in the middle of the road commercially and make sure you match the manufacturer to the brand name. And uh, make sure the product is not a formula product other than uh, certain ones like multivitamins and, uh, and, and go from there. Of course, again, if you can't trust your supplement supplier, you probably can't trust the supplement. And it works both directions. Online, it's a particularly difficult issue in that you don't have your hand on the product. Um, the, uh, you have to have it in your hand to actually take a look at it. Uh, they're not going to be um, eager to let you know everything I've just said um, until you buy it, and uh, then, you, then you've got it. So it, uh, it may be a, um, 
uh, exercise in futility to try to save a few dollars uh, with buying online at the rock bottom prices and then not getting something that you need that will actually work for you. The, uh, it's a, an interesting subject. Sure, and, and actually Nora has a, a good question regarding this kind of, uh, she's asking are those expiration dates actually real on the bottles? Um, are those yeah. just kind of like these generic, you know, questionable dates? Well, it's, that's a wonderful question. It's a very good question. Uh, with prescribed drugs, there are expiration dates, and that's mandated by law. It has to be there. And the recommendation is, is that they be uh, discarded in some safe manner and not used. And, you know, that's about potency and purity. The natural products will typically have an expiration date on them, and uh, that may or may not be necessary. Uh, if you've got aromatics, yes, I would recommend going by the expiration date and dumping them when they're not used. If they're vitamins, I would exp I would do the same. If you're using supplements as an adjunct uh, for an existing ailment, I would want to know personally that these products are fresh and potent. So I wouldn't buy old products past the expiration date for that, with the exception of perhaps minerals. Minerals, as I said earlier, certainly don't go bad. Now, here's one caveat. And it's, the, uh, it's not across the board that you'll see an expiration date on products. You may see a manufacturer's date on the product. The rule of thumb with that is if it says MFG, manufacturer, and then a date, that's when it was put together uh, in, in capsule form or tablet form. Maybe not when it was put in the bottle, but when it was put together in that form. And then the rule of thumb is three years from that manufacturing date. Mm. Uh, discard. Um, if, you, if it's not a mineral, discard. Um, okay. And that's what I would do. Okay. Great. Great. And, and so you, the next point here, you've already kind of touched on uh, about matching the brand name. This is what you meant by this. Yes. And be wary of the distributed by designation. Uh, that's... Um, that's a fudge factor uh, in this industry distributed by. It may be good, may not be. It's uh, certainly not the first tier product in my opinion. Right, right, okay. Uh, Private you know, label in its own league, yeah, yeah, explain this. <laughs> yes, it's, a, it's its own league. Uh, I, uh, my private label, I contract with a pharmacopist group. A pharmacopist is a pharmacist, uh, in essence, uh, that is specializing in uh, nutraceuticals, vitamins, minerals, herbals, and such. And uh, they uh, may not be licensed as a pharma pharmacist, but they are called pharmacopists. Uh, I contract with a group that uh, does all of the quality control. They, uh, the company then... Um, encapsulates and uh, or makes them into tablets according to the orders that are placed. They're fresh, potent, bottled at the time of my order. Entirely different creature. The, uh, there's more direct oversight. The, uh, the oversight isn't a big corporation with a, a lot of committees and groups looking at it. There will be those and uh, there are extra people hired by the uh, uh, private label groups to just make sure that they're meeting all of the government standards. When people say that this is an unregulated field, it's simply not true. Part of the price that you pay is to cover the uh, increased amount of regulation that's been placed on this field over the period of years. Uh, it only makes for a better product. Now, again, let's go back to does price indicate high quality? Not necessarily. Does low price indicate low quality? That becomes questionable. Uh, you can sort it out, though. Private label, different creature altogether. Wonderful. Okay, well, what do you mean by white papers on file? Uh, explain like the, what white papers are, and are you oh. saying that we have access to the information yeah. of the private label? No. <laughs> no, no. A, a private practice... Uh, um, a nutritional practitioner uh, like myself or a medical doctor that buys private label um, uh, would have access, but only um, if the uh, 
private label company is certain that you're not going to be giving secrets away. And uh, it's, sometimes it's a little difficult even for me to see white papers. But white papers are the papers for, uh, done by scientific analysis of the supplements themselves for quality, purity, potency. And uh, so that what you see on the back of the label of the bottle, you can be sure, assured of. And um, white papers occur for all nutritional supplements that are brought into the United States. It is by federal law that that occurs, as far as my understanding is concerned. I don't know of any other situation where that doesn't happen. Most supplements in their raw form come from uh, Canada is a marvelous place to get it. Some from the United States, uh, some from uh, Europe, and many from uh, Japan, but not the sea portion of Japan. Uh, not a good place to be buying kelp, for instance, from Japan. Not good. <laughs> right. Uh, okay. Well, wonderful. Yeah, that definitely answers the question. So I'm going to move on to part three now. Why our body and health requires vitamins and supplements in 2014 and beyond. Uh, there's a lot of mixed debate, obviously, in the vitamin and supplement industry, and I personally do feel that uh, you know we need this kind of uh, supplementation in our in our lives because of a wide range of factors. But please uh, explain your opinion on this. For sure. Uh, I remember long ago, I was uh, always on the 405 freeway in Los Angeles, uh, going either uh, from my home to Harbor UCLA, uh, or from UCLA, Harbor UCLA, uh, to my university, and then finally get home in the evening. And I would typically grab a sandwich or a burger or something to be eaten in the car while I was traveling, because the, the traffic was so bad and so slow. It would take an hour, an hour and a half to go anywhere. And uh, that was my nutrition for the evening. And, you know, that's a harried and fast uh, world in which you know, I certainly wasn't getting the nutrition I needed. I could get by with it. You know, we typically pay the piper 20 years later. Uh, we do pay the piper. Everybody does over time. That's part of what aging um, demands. Uh, however, uh, most people are harried. They're fast-paced. They've got to get dinner on the table for their family. Uh, they either buy fast food, they get takeout, or they'll go to the grocery store and they'll get convenience food. You know, packages that are already pre-seasoned and, and uh, just throw in some vegetables. And sometimes you can actually get the vegetables in the package and, uh, and boil up a little bit of white rice and, and uh, feed the family. And then you have to do everything else to get ready for going to work the next morning. Um, so there's that involved. Yes, you're filling the belly. But are you getting the nutritional uh, values that you want? And does the uh, is that even available for you? Now, that's the next question, is the food that you do get in the grocery store, not the convenience foods, and I'm certainly not talking about fast food, but the foods themselves, are they as nutritionally uh, rich as they used to be? Uh, that's a good question. Science is unsteady on that one. Uh, certainly the organic fresh, in my way of thinking, tastes better. And one thing is certain about organic and fresh is that it's lower in residue for pesticides. It doesn't have pesticide. And, uh, and um, then we get into the GMO issue. And uh, I try to avoid anything that's GMO simply because science doesn't know yet uh, whether that's good for you or not. It doesn't sound to me like it would be good for you in the long run, but the science isn't there yet. Certainly what we do know is, is that people with full bellies are very likely to be politically stable. Think about it. And people with hungry bellies are likely to be voting everybody out of office that they can vote out of office so they can get food. So a full belly is in the interest of society and civil society in general. Our revolutions have been caused, think of the French Revolution, by having hungry people. The um, uh, GMOs certainly fill bellies. Uh, political systems, civil systems stay more stable that way. And if people are ill later, well, they're, they'll take care of those ill people through the medical system as it's set up. Uh, so 
uh, that's why you want to do nutritional supplements and such uh, to the best of your ability. We live, do live in an increasingly dirty world, and none of us have the absolute right way of doing anything. You just do the best you can and, uh, and go from there. As far as uh, changes through a lifetime, that will that that occurs. What I need now is entirely different than what I needed even five years ago. Five years ago was entirely different than I needed when I was in my twenties. And uh, it's pretty simple in your teens and twenties uh, for the supplement choice, typically, with some exception. As you get older and aging and life experiences put a pressure on your body, then if you can do this through nutritional supplementation to assist your body, uh, and not as a treatment, but as an assist, then do so. Perhaps you'll avoid some of the problems of having to use prescribed drugs as you get older. And uh, I think that's a worthy endeavor. Uh, if you have to do prescribed drugs, that's a different story. However, did you know that prescribed drugs, most of them interfere with the absorption of certain nutrients? So even if you do have to be on prescribed drugs, choosing proper and appropriate quality nutrients will help make up for the loss of what many, if not most, prescribed drugs cause to happen in your body. Most people don't know that either. So look it up. It's there. We just don't talk about it. Yeah, that was uh, actually what my question was. Uh... That, that that seems to be a, a big issue. People, are, so many Americans, are on pharmaceutical drugs, and then if they're trying to take vitamins and supplements, some of them aren't even working because of the pharmaceuticals that they're on. Uh, are, are there resources online that people can really kind of find? I don't know, well qualified information on <laughs> what their drug is potentially doing uh, to you know as it relates to their vitamin and supplement intake. Uh, yes, uh, there is, uh, but as uh, you know, as, and I know, and everybody out there, because we're all internet uh, uh, aware these days, not everything that you read on the internet is going to be accurate uh, information. Some of it is really about selling, and some really is just about carrying an agenda. Mm -hmm. uh, I, um, what I typically do uh, when I'm trying to educate myself about this is that I'll do a, a regular search online with uh, nothing different than the drug name, uh, say metformin uh, or statin drugs, and then I'll, uh, and the Google search, which I use Google mostly, uh, I'll put nutritional deficiencies. And uh, there are many mainland, mainline uh, websites that will pop up that will tell you exactly what gets um, diminished. Uh, I'll give you a couple of examples. Um, uh, anything with a prill on the end, like the Sinopril, uh, will typically reduce your body's absorption of magnesium. Uh, what happens when your body reduces magnesium? Well, magnesium is known to be involved in more than 5,000 metabolic functions in the body. So we don't know long term what a deficiency of one mineral like uh, magnesium will be for many things. But we do know that as magnesium levels go down, muscle cramps go up, uh, asthma becomes worse, uh, the um, heart requires magnesium uh, to relax the smooth muscles so blood pressure can drop. We do know blood pressure tends to go up over a period of time, even on prescribed drugs, and that may be just because of the magnesium. Additionally, uh, calcium levels tend to increase in our blood as magnesium levels go down. And uh, that's not a good thing. And that can be changed uh, simply by altering certain things in your life uh, in all likelihood. You can never say always, rarely say never, but it's a good idea to be trying some of these things to see if it helps you. Um, I know that uh, I take... Uh, chelated magnesium. I think that's the best form, actually, and um, my, through my private label. And uh, with a chelated magnesium, I take it twice a day. My blood pressure is better managed. I am not on uh, any prescribed drug for, for that. And uh, I feel more relaxed, more at ease, and, uh, and I sleep better. Um, 
you know, at bedtime. So something as simple as that uh, is a good thing. Wonderful, wonderful. Cool. I want to recap uh, this whole section uh, once more, just because I feel like it was there's a lot of great information on it. Um, so your opinions on why we need vitamins and supplements here and beyond is uh, for nutritional insurance for fast-paced life. Absolutely. Yeah. Fast food, convenience food, not full of very <laughs> much nutrition. Period. Mostly just filler foods. Sad I love fact filler of food. foods, foods that taste great. And actually, I looked at that, my stomach growled. So <laughs> <laughs> those look pretty delicious. I know. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. That's what, they know. They know. <laughs> and and did, you, did you touch base on this? Uh, uh, not, on the mono, not on the monoculture exactly. No, uh, I'm a strong. I did mention I'm a strong proponent of the, our local farmers farmers market. Some of the best people you'll meet are behind the the uh, tables. You know, the farmers themselves, mm -hmm. and uh, and then you meet the whole community and you get to know people over a period of time. And it's a it's a blast all on its own. Which means that you're going to live longer because you're happier just from the socialization. And you can come and go. So you don't have to stay there a long time. You know, if you're not feeling particularly social, you can get a little bit of your social fix in and then leave. And you've got some good things in your basket. Right. Monoculture means uh, that uh, the produce is uh, typically one type of produce grown in one area again and again and again, perhaps with some rotation side by side or nearby. And uh, typically it's, it's one um, uh, flavor, if you will, of a tomato. It's not a variety of different tomatoes uh, and such. And uh, the, uh, over a period of time, uh, the stalks and the leaves are typically chopped up and put back in the dirt. Uh, and then fertilizer is put back in. But we don't make, uh, we, we simply don't make soil as well as nature makes soil. You know, our chemistry, we know what the plants need to produce, but our chemistry isn't the same, uh, our applied chemistry isn't the same as what nature does. And um, over a period of time, it has been shown that certain things, for instance, organic sulfur, um, uh, MSM, uh, decreases uh, in the foods that should have an abundance of it. So we typically run a deficit of organic sulfur. Why is that important? Well, organic sulfur in deep research science is now being related to, in its deficit, part of the reason that we produce more sticky cholesterol and get more uh, heart disease, that we simply don't have enough of that, along with saturated fat, proper wow. saturated fat, and vitamin D levels. Wow. I didn't know that. This uh, <clears throat> reminds me of a, a book I recently read. It was uh, The End of Illness by David Agus, and uh, he's bringing up a lot of the same points in that book. Uh, he's he's posing the question, do we need vitamins or in supplements in today's world? And he's making all those same points, which I have to say I agree with. You know, we live fast-paced life. We're eating fast food and junk food for the most part. And his main point was if you can eat enough greens, if you can eat enough organic foods, then no, you don't necessarily need vitamins and supplements. But because of the nature of today's culture and lifestyle, we do. I agree with that. Uh, let me show you something here, uh, and this is uh, bear in mind. Uh, this is from our local farmers market this morning, uh, Sycamore Farms, and uh, what a what a delight this is going to be. Now this is the fresh ear of corn. It's an heirloom ear of corn, sweet corn, and uh, it's smaller than what you're going to see in the grocery store. Well, they're you know you know why it's bigger. You can and fill in the blank, and uh, I'm eager to give this a try at home. This was grown um, without pesticide. This was grown with the loving hands and attention of a young farm family uh, whose only desire is to get good food on people's table. And um, it's smaller, so you pay a little more for it, uh, and you're not going to fill your belly as fast with it, uh, as fast with it. But mm -hmm. think of the enjoyment you're going to get from it and the benefit, the nutritional benefit that may come with this that isn't in that larger ear of corn. And I'm saying may because, again, science is kind of showing that 
at least the vitamins and minerals that are able to be measured is not much difference. However, not everything can be measured, like um, phytosterols, uh, for instance, and uh, these are uh, rapidly diminishing um, sterols, plant fats that disappear after the vegetable has been plucked and refrigerated. Uh, my phytosterol grouping in this is going to be very high. Let me just say very quickly that phytosterols uh, are relatively unknown in their benefit to the human body. However, uh, phytosterols, I can tell you, are abundant in something like um, uh, pycnogenol, maritime pine bark, and uh, most of the high antioxidant um, uh, herbals and uh, phytosterols are remarkably effective in uh, keeping us looking younger and feeling better, uh, uh, though not as a treatment but as a food. Uh, one other phytosterol that uh, people need to know about is uh, very useful for prostate conditions and it, the list goes on and on. Uh, helping to reduce cholesterol without uh, interfering with the liver's production of CoQ10, which is interfered with by most of the statin drugs that drops our own natural production of CoQ10, which ironically is necessary for heart and brain health. So uh, there's a place for this. You just have to be smart about it. Don't go willy-nilly into it. Um, if uh, research isn't your forte, then come to see somebody whose research is their forte, somebody that you can trust. If that's me, that's wonderful. I invite you to. If it's Robin or Ginger, they've been trained by me. If they don't know the answer, uh, they will come to me and uh, we'll communicate. Um, if it's anybody else, uh, as long as you trust them and, you, and uh, as you go through this, um, it's worthy of a try. And uh, you've learned some particular ways of sorting out some of the mess of what's a good supplement choice and what's not according to how it's manufactured and sold. And that's what we wanted to do tonight. Yeah, absolutely. Wonderful. And that will lead us perfectly into our last section here. Now, um, as I mentioned at the beginning, um, I personally, when I walk into a store, I'm overwhelmed by all the choices and I'm interested in hearing what your you know, 101 kind of advice is for understanding the vitamin and supplement world. Maybe your uh, top three recommendations for vitamins and supplements would be great too. Yeah? Oh, absolutely. Uh, I'm going to start. This is going to be a little funny, I hope, but I have it in a frame and, uh, <laughs> because it's wow. so important. And uh, <laughs> see, there it is again. It's um, this one. It's Super Omega Three. It's a uh, fish oil, and. Uh, um, Almost everybody should be doing uh, some level of omega-3s every day. Uh, and uh, people ask, uh, is uh, fish oil um, the same as uh, krill oil? No, it's not. It's a different type of fat altogether. They have a lot of the same benefit. Krill shouldn't be used for people that are allergic to shell shrimp. Uh, but it should be, uh, that, there's my omega-3, uh, but it should be used by people who have cardiovascular disease, maybe along with omega-3s. Uh, they work a little differently in the body, the two of them. Omega-3s, um, uh, the data is long and lasting. Just make sure it's a high-quality product. Um, if it's enteric coated, uh, it means it breaks down on the small bowel. You won't get fishy burps or anything unpleasant. And uh, it needs to be, these days, unfortunately, it needs to be uh, molecularly distilled so that you're not getting any of the poisons from the sea. And, um, and I like a higher potency product so you're not swallowing so many soft gels. They come in soft gels. I recommend soft gels over bottles of oil. Uh, as soon as you open the bottle of oil, it starts to go rancid from the contact with oxygen in the atmosphere. And um, uh, I'm not a fan of that. If you, uh, a lot of uh, negatives to that. So if you get it in soft gels, they're not in contact with the air. You just keep them in a cool, dry place, not refrigerated, a cool, dry place. And typical dosing for a younger person is one a day. Uh, for an, you know, 30 something two a day and uh, over 40 probably three a day on a good quality fish oil uh, if there's cardiovascular conditions or uh, anything else like um, uh, 
forgetfulness and early dementias, then probably would want to do, be doing three soft gels of a good quality omega-3 and then adding krill oil as long as you're not allergic to fish or shellfish. Now moving past that, two other supplements are really important. And uh, do you have the multivitamin slide uh, ready? And we'll uh, touch in on, on that one. I believe that is that it. There we go. Uh, these are both private label multivitamins. One is with iron, one is without iron. And people often wonder, well, should I do iron or not iron? You know, uh, middle-aged people grew up with their moms giving them liver once a week, you know, and uh, boy, what a, a gaggy proposition that was for most of us. And with the uh, understanding that, well, it's a natural source of all kinds of goodness like iron. And, uh, well, the bottom line to it is, is that uh, if you don't need iron, don't supplement with it. Um, get your iron and food, and if you don't like liver, get it from other sources. And you can get it from other sources. Sorghum is delicious, and it's a very bioavailable source of iron. And, uh, and it's, it's not going to cause any GI distress, unlike some of the prescribed and some of the over-the-counters. The, uh, the reason you would do one with iron uh, would be uh, if you're a young woman and uh, your uh, menstruation is uh, more than uh, average, if it's heavy, it certainly you may need some extra iron there. And, um, and or if you're um, iron deficient and anemic, then yeah, you would want to supplement with the iron. Um, and of course this is all in tandem with what your medical doctor would be telling you you need to do too. Um, B vitamins, uh, multivitamins with iron, um, sorghum, that's typically what I think most people would go for at any age uh, if they're wanting to do something natural, uh, nutritionally, for um, moderate anemia, depending upon the cause. The uh, Without iron is what most people do, and, uh, and that's... Um, the best choice for anybody who isn't in need of that extra iron. Uh, as we get older, we certainly don't need iron stores to go up. And the iron stores tend to stay in the body a long time, and it's very irritating to the inside of the body. In fact, it can increase uh, inflammatory levels to the point that a blood test called a C-reactive protein test elevates just because of the iron. Regular medicine's way of reducing iron content is through the old-fashioned bloodletting, you know, leaching, drawing blood out, and, uh, and uh, re reducing serum levels of iron. There are n nutritional supplements that can help do that, too. Uh, however, if you're taking a no-iron multivitamin, you're getting the nutritional insurance for this fast-paced world that's really beneficial. To me, in my thinking, for sure, and you're not adding extra iron to your body that your body may or may not need. So um, that's how you sort that out. And again, uh, choosing a good supplement, trust your supplement supplier, then you can trust your supplement. It's pretty simple and straightforward. The uh, last product uh, is. Uh, something that may surprise you or may not, uh, all of us have seen increased um, advertisements for any number of uh, yogurts with probiotics in them. You know, Greek yogurt is probably one of the best choices these days. It has a little bit of probiotic in it, not much. A probiotic is like acidophilus. Uh, I like a quality probiotic taken daily by everybody. And I mean that, everybody. And the quality probiotic should have eight or more families in the billions of each family and be made to withstand the acid of the stomach. If you think about it, stomach acidity partly is to kill bacteria in your food. And um, uh, probiotics are good bacteria. So if it's not made to withstand uh, the stomach acid, then your stomach acid is going to kill most of the probiotic, even in yogurt, for instance. Some will slip by, you know, life always finds a way, and repopulate in the small bowel. But you're way ahead of the game if you're on an enteric coated uh, type of supplement for that. Now, why do you want to do that? Well, it's not just for digestive health. It is for that. Uh, when your digestion improves, everything improves. 
the uh, other thought, though, is that um, the proper probiotics actually increases uh, our immune uh, response and improves our immune response. Um, there is science uh, connecting probiotic availability in the digestion of certain amino acids, like carnitine with an I, not carnosine, but carnitine, uh, with a reduction of irritation of the arteries in our uh, throughout our body, including our brain, which reduces long-term product problems if we drop the uh, irrit irritants that cause an increase in inflammation. So uh, probiotics have been shown to have a tie-in with dementias, um, carotid artery disease, and coronary artery disease. Uh, and uh, for you guys out there, here's a little bit of a, uh, an incentive. Um, the arteries that service that part of our body, and you know what I'm talking about, uh, also benefit by keeping them clear of plaque and plaque buildup. So a single probiotic every day is very useful. By the way, I have seen uh, seborrhea and, and uh, uh, eczema and uh, this kind of dermatitis uh, drop away simply by increasing vitamin D levels and herbal called pycnogenol, which is rich in polyphenols, which we talked about a little bit, and probiotics. It's an interesting combination. Wow. And uh, it, it's uh, pretty cool. Uh, people come to me often when medicine doesn't have any other way. And, uh, and uh, I have the good fortune of having local doctors who will agree to, to uh, have their patients come down and see me and talk with me. And uh, so that's why I'm talking about it in this manner, instead of strictly as a nutritional type food. It is nutritional food. And you got to look at it that way because that's what it is. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Okay, so to recap, you recommend as, a, as far as the top three vitamin supplement choices to take for anyone for any kind of purpose, really. Uh, probiotics. Absolutely. The fish oil and the multivitamins with or without iron. Now, this is probably a novice question, but uh, how, how would someone find out what their iron levels are? What's the process these days? Well, you have to go to a medical doctor, or in some uh, cities, depending upon the state laws, uh, there are franchises where you can get blood draws done without a medical doctor's direct involvement, and you have to have a blood test for it. Typically, it's going to be a complete blood count and iron levels. And uh, while you're there, uh, you know, you might ask for a metabolic panel just to see how things are going in the rest of your body. It's called a comprehensive metabolic panel or a chemistry panel. It's about the same thing. But uh, it's a blood draw, and uh, it's easy to do. It's typically not expensive. And uh, if you have medical insurance, typically medical insurance will cover it as long as your doctor orders it. And, and they have, uh, for most places, the doctors have to order it. But again, uh, some of these uh, companies that will do it as retail sale uh, don't require a doctor's order up front, but there's a group of medical doctors that own the franchise that sign up behind the scenes so the labs will do the, do the work. And that's how you do it. Wonderful. Okay. Good to know. Well, we're going to go ahead and move into the Q&A session now. I know a few people have been asking questions throughout the webinar, <clears throat> and uh, we can start by addressing those. Let me switch over here real quick. All right, so Noor has another question. She was asking, since the spill at was it Fukushima, how can you tell fish oil and other sea products are safe? Oh, it's an excellent question. And uh, uh, when that happened, uh, let me back up a little bit. Part of my background in life is uh, I was a division chief of nuclear medicine, and I taught uh, the effects of radiation exposure on the body. And... Uh, and when that happened, I was greatly disturbed, and I still see it as uh, we were so close to life changing on this world in an incontrovertible way, and in a way that would not be reversed. If one more reactor had gone down, we would be in deep trouble today. Our West Coast would be in a different place. Mm. Uh, the, um, uh, I, I'm a, um, of the opinion that uh, if you're... Um, uh, if you're looking for fish oils, uh, know the source of the fish oils. 
uh, my fish oils come from the North Atlantic. And, uh, and it's the same with other products like kelp uh, for thyroid health. It's a natural source of iodine. Uh, you want to be sure that it's not from an area that has a lot of radioactivity in it. Now let's talk about the west coast of the U.S. It's probably not enough radioactivity there to have any effect on the body at this point. And remember, uh, my past history was as a radiation uh, worker specialist expert in some ways, and uh, it's probably not enough to be of concern. Um, if another reactor had gone down, it would have been a different story. Mm -hmm. uh, the, um, as far as uh, sushi is concerned, uh, if it's uh, caught in, over in the Sea of Japan and it's a big fish that's meeting with small fish um, and it's shipped over here, make sure that your serving is very small. Typically, the servings with sushi are small. They're just, you know, it's just too expensive otherwise. And, um, you know, remember, it's an, an increasingly dirty world and uh, you know, we all deal with that and you can only do as well as you can do. Restricting one's life, you know, un, you know needlessly is uh, not a good life anyway. So um, just be aware and uh, make your choices to the best of your ability. Mm -hmm. Great. Okay. Uh, Michael has a question. He says, I had a local dentist tell me recently not to waste my money on grapefruit seed extract. Thoughts on that? <laughs> well, <laughs> well, uh, the... Uh, uh, he's following. He's following the the rules uh, set by the system. That's for sure. Uh, a grapefruit seed extract, uh, when done as an oral rinse or in a toothpaste, uh, or um, uh, I do it in my uh, irrigator, in my dental irrigator, like an entreplaque, uh, twice a day. Uh, and uh, as long as you don't make it too strong, I put four drops in about a half of an irrigator full container. It's that, that, that good. And you do your gum lines instead of flossing. And uh, on the inside and the outside, you follow the quadrants. Uh, I haven't had a cavity in 15 years, and my cleanings are you know, something like 10 minutes long. And uh, the uh, dentist always comes in, and he's a good guy. I really do like him. And he uh, says profoundly, you know, uh, what are you doing? I can't make a living. And uh, <laughs> so there, yeah, that, that's my experience with grapefruit seed extract for, as an oral rinse. I think it's a good thing. Okay. Wonderful, wonderful. I don't see any more questions. Guys, if y'all have any more questions for Dr. Fain, they can be anything health-related, feel free to type them in the chat room. Uh, any, any last thoughts before we close things up here, Dr. Fain? Uh, I... I this is the second time we've done this, and uh, we're working out the, the kinks, and we're changing things as we go, and uh, I'm really glad to have you all on board. Look at that, y'all. That's a good southern word, isn't it? That's you all. And, uh, and uh, um, uh, you know, this is going to get better and better as we go. And I believe, uh, Heath, isn't it so that uh, for a while people will be able to review this online? Yeah, everyone that registers... For the webinar, we'll be able to view the replay for probably about a week after. So if they missed it, they're able to uh, to get it. So in, in the future, so everyone knows, if there's a webinar, if we're hosting one and you're just not able to make it, you're out of town, at work, whatever, uh, go ahead and register, and you will have access to the replay. Good, good. I'm glad to hear that. Uh, that you know, that, that's a really good thing. Uh, the other thing is, is that um, um, I did produce uh, an ebook which you have access to, and uh, Heath will tell you how to get that. Uh, the ebook has been a process over a period of time. Uh, I've been writing uh, health columns, natural health columns, for about 15 years in a variety of periodicals, and uh, you'll have access to many of them through my ebook. Uh, you'll also get a psychologic take on how to live well. And uh, it's uh, it's day to day uh, living. It's not couched in highfalutin terms, you know, that are, are just kind of idiotic. It's a uh, it comes from my heart. It comes from my own experience. So uh, please do get a copy of my ebook too. I think that's free, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. It's a, it's a great collection of writings. I want to say, and uh, it's available to uh, anyone that signs up on our email list. So if you go to fainsherbacy.com. You can sign up for the list, and they have uh, immediate access to it. 
you can download the ebook. And this is just uh, officially posted probably about what three weeks ago now. It's I live, think so. so I think it was fresh to the world. But yeah, a, a great compilation of writings for sure. And that uh, that actually leads me into uh, just letting everyone know here. If you scroll down to the right there, we have a button. Uh, visit our online store, and that'll take you to Dr. Fain's eBay store. Uh, if you're interested in purchasing any of the products we've discussed tonight, you uh, can do that now. You just click on the button down there. And of course, we appreciate your support, Dr. Fain. Anything? Absolutely, uh, the uh, the store is uh, very important because if you if you know Eureka Springs, you know that the winter time is um, and not much is going on. Uh, people can't get up and around to a large extent, and and uh, uh, the eBay store, uh, the Fane's Urbacy store, uh, is a way to get products delivered right to your home as long as you're getting mail service, and that would be true in any snowy area or icy area. And last year, that was, what, two-thirds of the United States? Talk about intense weather changes. And yeah, yeah. Um, so this is one way we can adjust and, and deal with that. And I urge you to support yourself and not support your family. Um, us, thank you for that in advance. And consider uh, using the Fane's Urbacy store as often as you can. And uh, I, again, I appreciate the time, and I am honored to have you uh, view this webinar. Yeah, thanks everyone for attending. Uh, it's been fun. I always enjoy hosting these. I, I learn just as much as y'all do um, about health and everything, all the wisdom that Dr. Fain has. So uh, again, sign up for more, too, uh, if y'all see the webinars in the future. Sign up, and you'll have access to the replays. I don't see any more questions in the chat room, so I think... That is everything. We're going to go ahead and close it up. Thanks again for attending, everyone. And thank you, everyone. Uh, and uh, this, you know what I'm going to do with this tonight, so uh, <laughs> I'll let you know. Bye-bye. All right. Good night, guys.